Claudia and, and George, if we can, if you want to show your face, we'd love to see your face. I, I have a hard time talking to photos. Um, <laughs> but I want to chat real quick about some Facebook groups, kind of what we're doing. Um, what, there you are. Um, what we're doing, what kind of my plans are, and then I love kind of to go around the room and see what you guys are doing as well. Um, so I'll kick it off. We have two Facebook groups. You guys are obviously know about the Whistle Way. Um, that one is built to uh, share information with other real estate agents to help um, build our brand, not only locally within um, for recruiting uh, people to out join our team um, and learn our culture, but also nationally for which helps with uh, Kyle speaking and all that sort of stuff. Um, so we have the Whistle Way. We've run that for about um, two years now, maybe. Um, and have, is that, is that me that's kind of humming or is that someone else? I don't hear it. Um, we've been around, I don't know, for a couple of years. Uh, we have another group called Everything East County, um, San Diego. And the, that is um, for consumers in our area. We've had that for about a month and a half, have about uh, 600 members in that. Um, and so that's just a way for us to kind of um, build and get to know our community members, have them fill in and be uh, um, engaged. So that's how we're utilizing Facebook groups. And then obviously there's all the real estate Facebook groups that, that we all I'm sure participate in. So Adam, why don't we start with you? Um, give us a rundown of, of how you're using Facebook groups and kind of how you see them. Uh, sure. So in my market about a year ago, I started a community page, um, which is the, it's a little island community here south of Charleston. That's about 24,000 people. Um, and I started it with the idea of kind of the premise of some of us here locally wanting to learn how to engage more with the community. And from that, I went out and, uh, and I had a few of my friends, I kind of call them the, the founding fathers to help get the page started. Um, and, and we've built it now to, uh, it's about 800 um, organic members. And since then I've just spun off a, uh, a dog page about our area and the beef and that sort of thing. So um, I've been working hard to get it where it is now and, and I'm trying to now introduce myself as the person who is behind the page because I've kept it kind of, kind of on the down low until now. Can you share a link to your page um, on, in the chat? Yes. Sure. Um, and why did you choose the page over group? Community page over group. Well, I was struggling with what, how to do that when I put it together, but um, it was, I had went to, um, you know, a seminar and learned a, a little bit about Facebook marketing and, and I decided to go with a community page um, just because I thought it was a little less assuming um, than a group. I know that that can be changed, right? Um, you can spin off a page from your group, um, which is what we did. If you go into your page somewhere, um, you can say create a group and that's what we did. Yeah. Um, and, and I know Facebook's really pushing groups right now. Um, I mean, if you scroll through your Facebook feed right now, I guarantee you more than 50% of your, uh, I can't guarantee you, I would bet more than 50% of your posts that you see are groups. So group, add group, remember in this day, group, group, add stories, one personal post, then back to groups. And so um, that's why we really are pushing our group, um, just because we're getting a lot more engagement in that than we are with the page. Um, so good, Adam, if you can share your link on the chat on the side, that way we can all check it out. I'm going to mute you, Adam. I think what's happening is I think the fan is picking up, or your mic is picking up the fans in the background, which is giving us a little bit of a hiss. Okay, got it. So I've got you muted. Claudia, you're up next. Tell us how you are utilizing Facebook groups. So we started a couple of different ones, uh, some a little more recent than others. Uh, and for a really long time, we just weren't getting anything on them. 
So we actually did some, we did run some, um, uh, we ran them across to next door, which is actually where most of them were started. Um, so we have, for example, a couple of different communities that are very close to our office. So we kind of made a group for each of those communities. Uh, one of them is a, a brand new master plan community that they just started building. So we kind of jumped on the name and, and got it started that way. So most of them have just been sort of organic as to the group and they've been slow and in, in coming. Um, <laughs> but, you know, they weren't the priority, so no big deal as long as it, it was, we would post sometimes. So now we're just being a little more active and posting on a regular basis, engaging the people that do come on. Um, so one, it's been a whole learning curve because there have been a lot of changes to the group section. Um, and some of really good, uh, you know, really good stuff. So, um, so that stuff is, uh, is growing slowly but surely. Um, now, can you tell me how, how, how long have you had that master community group and then what, what kind of engagement are you seeing with it? Uh, most of the engagement has been in regards to even just natural. It, it's not called a real estate group or anything. It's just called the master plan community name. Yeah. And, uh, and but most of the questions have come through, uh, you know, are real estate related. Um, and in a way, we didn't want it to be a real estate group per se. Uh -huh. I don't want to join a real estate group. I want to join a community Correct. group. Correct. Um, so it's it's you know we use BombBomb for example, Prompt. So like our videos are you know our monthly uh, videos that go on there get posted to those um, to those groups without. Okay without the real estate on top of it. Um, so most of the engagement has been in regards to, you know, what's the best neighborhood, what's the best subdivision there, how are the schools, um, you know, where do you guys go eat, what's your favorite restaurant, that kind of stuff. Okay, um, so you do, but you do share your real estate content in that group, is that what I hear you say? Yes. Okay, cool. Not a lot though, not overkill. Okay. Cool. Um, George, your turn, buddy. Tell us about your, your experience with groups. Okay, so I got two groups. Um, I'm currently living in Riverside, uh -huh. uh, but I did live uh, in Southgate, and I coached out there, still living in Riverside. So I created a group out there in the city of Southgate, since I know a lot of people, it's what's going on in the city. Um, it, it's used to give more information. There's a lot of groups out there, and all they do is give uh, information regarding what's going on in the city in regards to uh, the bad stuff like crime, people illegally parking. So I wanted to go away from that. So the, the, the purpose of my page was to provide positive information, uh, events that are going on with the city, events that are going on in schools, promoting uh, businesses. I haven't got to the point where you guys are at where you're out there, you know, uh, promoting uh, and eating at the business stores and stuff like that. But I got the council member, one of the, the, the council members that's on as an administrator. So he helps me out with that page. Cool. Um, and then here in the city of Riverside, I live in the Ramon area by Cal Baptist university by CBU. And okay. uh, my sister-in-law, she's, she's on my team as well. So she lives in the Ramona area. So we created the Ramona, Ramona neighborhood uh, page for Riverside. Um, that it's been going on for about three months. Uh, we don't have a lot of people in that group, but our, our purpose for that is to provide information just for the Ramona area of Riverside. Uh, just like uh, I believe Claudio. Uh, um, businesses that are in the community uh, providing content, uh, not trying to do the overkill with the real estate aspect of it. Uh, yeah. You know, we're, we're like this week, we're doing a community yard sale in our area. So we're posting everything on there in our Ramona area of Riverside. We're, we're putting uh, out videos. We're putting out, uh, like yesterday, we were in the night putting up the signs already. So we did little little video content on that. I uh -huh. see people are engaged when it comes to videos, even short videos, versus just putting posts in itself. Um, but now it's trying to get the word out so people, more people could join that. Um, and one thing that I want to talk to you about, you mentioned it with your other group, um, but I, I want to come back to it. I want to get through everyone, but I want to come back to it. I want you to think about it. Um, is that you, a lot of the groups you talked about, you know, they do complain about the crime and the traffic and that sort of stuff. I want to know what your plan is to combat that when that comes into your group and how you, I mean, obviously it's easy to share the positivity, right? 
but obviously um, obviously people are going to come in with the negativity. So I want to, I want to dive into that and kind of, that's something that I'm really kind of worried about with our group is turning it into like, this place sucks and this sucks and this sucks. And so I want kind of your guys' thoughts, but anyways, excellent. Let's move on to James. Um, George, I'm going to mute you again. James, go ahead and unmute yourself. Tell us your experience about uh, Facebook groups. Um, we've been pretty good so far. Yeah. I've seen a lot of experience with, uh, like negativity and issues with certain people uh, or certain groups inside them. Uh, right now we have the uh, one we have. We have the group that's geared towards uh, real estate agents. So kind of growing out the community. So far it's been pretty good. Good engagement. People are actually giving like helpful tips and, and ideas of what to do, especially if you're like a newer agent. Instead of some of the fluffy junk, of spend money here, buy this campaign, and all this crazy stuff that uh, I see in other groups. So yep. up and go good. Uh, we're working on a coaching and development one as well, a separate one. Uh, we're also talking about uh, Wilco Eats, so like Williamson County, and doing more like food and fun engagement and uh, things to do, you know, out there. So we're kind of playing around with a couple other groups, uh, not specifically based on clients uh, that we already have, but also you know roping them into things that are something other than just heavy real estate every single post. Now you mentioned you're doing, you're going to be creating a coaching group. Is that something for current coaching clients? Is that something that people have to pay to join? What's your? Uh, we haven't dialed everything in yet. There's probably going to be like a uh, like a free version, a free portion, where it's just you know providing content and good information to help people um, and just creating good value, and then uh, like a step up or a tiered system, so where you can, if you're part of this group, you know you're in this. Uh, or this tier, you're in this group. If you're in the next tier, if you're in another group. That way, you kind of incentivize people to move through the system. Yeah. Uh, but we haven't dialed anything in. It's just been a lot of uh, brainstorming and stuff, and we kind of got sidetracked with the move to the new office and some other stuff we're working on. Cool. Um, one kind of, and I don't know how I feel about this. I, I I can argue both sides of it, but if say you have three tiers of coaching, you have beginner, medium, and advanced, right? And it gets more expensive as you go. Yeah. I'm curious, and this is something you're, you're gonna to wanna to brainstorm. If they're in advanced, do they also get beginner and intermediate? Because here's what I'm worried about, right? Is the quality of group depends on, on not only the quality of people, but how they value the group. So what I'd be worried is, is you have your high-end advanced group um, of, of powerhouse agents but they don't value the I'm, I'm i'm making this i'm i'm making shit up here but maybe the, the the 30 people you have they don't interact in the group so your best group or your best coaching clients has the could have the shittiest group so then do you allow them to be in the beginner and intermediate as well anyway so that's something to think about yeah i like that um the only thing is i've seen in some other groups you have people who are significantly more advanced in their career as opposed to some of the people like uh, there's a comment in a new real estate agents group and the girl she's a newer agent and she's complaining about having to delist 17 listings and put them in a new uh, mls and in that same group people are asking how do i get business period like what is the first thing i do is do i read a book do i buy yeah. business card like how do i even function and so i was telling her like hey that's cool but this is probably not the best group to vent in. Uh, maybe provide context of how you got to 17 listings, 17 active listings, um, as opposed to talking to people who maybe can't even feed themselves or you know are worried about their next bill that's going to come out of their account and they're not generating any business. Period. So maybe to to if you if you want to segment groups, what about segment them in ter instead of in terms of what coaching, pro you know, everyone in your, co let's say you have a hundred people in your coaching program. I'm just making up numbers. Um, yeah. Instead of segmenting them, well, you pay 10 grand a month. You're in the top one. You pay five grand a month. You're in the middle one, one grand bottom, right? Instead of doing that, maybe you do it based on transaction number or volume count or, or, or like, so that way, Hey, if you sell over a hundred million, you're in this group. If you sell between you know, 50 and 100 million, you're in this group. So that way, then you're around the same people. And then I think you can still 
um, everyone that's in the 100 million plus, you could also allow them to be in the other groups. So that way, if someone says, hey, how do I get started? Your 100 million plus or goes, oh, hey, this is what you, this is what I do to get started. So they can kind of help coach the, the younger ones. But when they have their opinion on like, hey, how do I, I I'm, do I, um, I want to recruit another team to join my team, my, another brokerage to join my brokerage. Like that's not going to be the same. It's going to be a different level of conversation. Yeah. It's kind of like, Hey, Brian's Dave. Hey, Dave. Um, like Tom Ferry coaching. Yeah. There's the different levels. And then the elite people are all in the, uh, whatever this, the, the group right below the, you know, the two week coaching or whatever that's called. Yep. Uh, no, but that's, I, I, I get that. Our yeah, most of the stuff we're going to do is most, it's not necessarily, it'll be geared at Facebook, but the tiers more talking would be uh, breaking off into groups of like 90 day coaching programs versus 30 day coaching programs versus, versus, you know, nothing we want to do is necessarily a, a, a coaching client phone call every week driven. It's more of buy our package. Does that make sense? And it includes the group. Right, right, right. So for, for like 297, you get a 90 day you know, basically uh, a 90 day plan to, to get into action. And if you follow it and the group's there to coach and we coach all on a zoom call and things like that. So I just didn't, uh, James knows what we're doing, but he didn't, he didn't give it to you the right way. No, that's fine. And I, I probably heard it wrong. So that's fine. Um, I, I, I like that a lot. And what we did it with our media mayor mastermind, we just did our two day event here in San Diego. Um, I created a group, uh, for that team, I think we had 12 people come in. Um, I created a group beforehand so that way they can kind of ask questions. And it was really great. Like, hey, who's coming in early? Where do you guys want to get dinner before it starts? You know, let's Uber to, the, to from the airport together. So it was that sort of stuff. But now it's people are continually posting, hey, I'm implementing this. Or I just got a question. Hey, how do I utilize this tool that we talked about? I heard it, but I, I didn't understand it. So we're using it as kind of a, a a continuation of that of that event. So cool, cool, cool. I love that. I like I like where you because I think we're doing a lot of very similar things too with it. Brad, I'm going to unmute you. James, you can mute yourself, or I'll mute you here. Um, Brad, now that you have a shirt on, go ahead. And, uh, <laughs> you guys saw that? Yeah, this is a video call. I forgot I saw, that. You, <laughs> you did this and go. Ooh, and then. <laughs> I was like, oh, geez, Jesus. Yeah, um, okay, sorry about that, guys. That's fine. I'm going to upload this to YouTube so everyone will see Perfect. it. Fine. <laughs> uh, so, Brad, uh, we talked a little bit before you started. I know you're doing things a little differently. You haven't created a group yourself, but you utilize real estate groups to kind of grow your influence. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, yeah. So, obviously, Brian, you and I uh, – both really have kind of focused our businesses around video. Video has been my focus. I've used uh, Facebook groups as an opportunity for me to share what I do um, and get feedback from people who are way smarter, better uh, than I am. And also to get out of ruts because I it's very easy for me to go down a certain path and, and I, I, I kind of, you know, I don't know what I don't know until I see someone else doing it. And then when I see that, I realize there's stuff that I can leave, even from a video I might not be very impressed with, There's but there's stuff that I can really gain, maybe on the storytelling element or something like that. And over time, what I've realized is that as I've kind of, kind of honed my own craft, it's been a place that could slowly develop into maybe some other interest would be teaching sort of the video side of things, or at least my approach to say doing the higher end listing videos, those sorts of things. But what's interesting, one of the big reasons I wanted to come on this call today um, is I, I, and the reason why I couldn't get on for the first 10 minutes was because I had an opportunity. Uh, I, I met some people who are, in, who are investors. They've got a bunch of listings coming up, but one thing that they're doing is in this very cool, trendy corner of my city, um, they are putting up a building, but the developers and they're 50% owners in this like 65, 70 unit condo. And the developers are like 70 years old. They have no social media, none of that stuff. Um, they might have an agent that they've worked with in the past. My, the people that I met are busy. They're involved in like 18 different directions. They are kind of like, Hey, if you can do something, Brad, 
Um, maybe you can do something on the market. Maybe we can get you to co-list these 70 units, which would be an insane opportunity for me and my family. So basically on Tuesday at 1, 1 p.m., they just called and said, hey, can you pitch something to all these you know, millionaire and billionaire people? And so we're spending our weekend putting, it's gonna slap together lifestyle video, all this stuff. But a big part of it is not just creating the content, a big part of it is trying to get some kind of movement around um, the community. And a big part of, I think, selling this building, which is currently just in the ground, the parkade that they're putting in, is to try to get people attracted to why they would wanna live in that area. And so it's a great area. So it's going to take partnerships with businesses and all that stuff. So a Facebook group seems like it's the perfect way to generate some interest. So I think you can do kind of, I think you can kind of combine and Adam, I know it's a page, but I'm, I'm going to kind of twist it to what I think uh, starting fresh would be. I think you can kind of combine what, a little bit what Adam is doing and a little bit what Claudia is doing. I think creating a, a group for the community yeah, uh, you know, you know the, the city does that go to however you have it laid out. Um, maybe it's a neighborhood, maybe it's not a whole, whatever it is. Um, yeah. and, and so that way you talk about the businesses, you talk about the lifestyle, you get people in and you can also pepper in construction updates. Yeah. I think that's cool. And that's kind of what Adam's doing um, with his page is talking about the community. Um, and then I think what you also do is you do what Claudia is doing and build a Facebook group for that community. Yeah. And um, so, so for, the, for that building, so for the owners, the renters, the people that live in that building, so that way they can say, hey, um, you know, is, is everyone else having a power outage in this building? Or, um, mm -hmm. hey, just FYI, someone left their laundry and well, I don't know what the fuck it happens, but yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, we're all having a picnic, whatever it is. So I think creating two groups, one now for the, for the, the community, yeah, um, I think you create one for the building right now, even though you're not going to really build into it. Um, yeah. But you can just kind of start putting stuff in so that way it's ready to launch. I think that would be really, really cool. Yeah, I think that's great. That's awesome. I, I think that's for for me. That's the uh, otherwise at all. You create these pieces of content and they're little islands, and there's no way to kind of group them or connect them otherwise, right? Like it goes onto my personal real estate page or sort of like a, a, an obscure or irrelevant part of my YouTube channel. I want these pieces to be grouped in some, in some possible way. So people have a, a way to kind of rifle down. And I also think there's, there, it's a, like a little trendy area community where it's the kind of businesses that realtors profile, like owner operator cafes, owner operator craft breweries, like people who are part of the community, not, not just a big, you know, chain yeah. restaurant. Yeah, it's not Walmart McDonald's. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Um, okay. So like I said, I wanted to talk about positivity and how we keep out the negativity. Um, anyone have experience? Uh, George, you said you had, I think you said it, that you were getting negativity from certain people, or maybe that was James from certain people in specifically. How do you kind of weed that out? What, what do you do to kind of keep the culture positive? Anyone have any uh, good tips that they want to dive in? And obviously, some of us have uh, consumer groups and some of us have agent groups. I think with agent groups, we can be a little bit more of a, hey, don't be an asshole type thing. I don't think we really want to say that with consumer groups. But I think this still works with, with all sides. So George, how, how have you been able to keep that positivity and keep out the negativity? Well, the page that I have is actually very really good. I only have like, yeah, well, I have about fifteen hundred members right now, but I'm part of a community group in the city of Southgate called the Southgate Police Scanner. The moderator there, the administrator of that page, is, is it looks like that's what he does full time. But it, it's he has a couple other people that help him with the page. That uh, before they post, they they look at they have to approve the post. Okay. So if, if it's a post that, that's put on that, that doesn't comply with the rules or what they're looking for for the group, then they'll either not post it or if it does get through, it, it, gets, it gets flagged right away. And then um, they, they give them a timeout. No, they'll kick them out for a week or they'll kick them out for a month. But the rules are posted on, on, on the, I guess, in the, on the top of the page where it's pinned on what they're looking for. But, uh, you know, there's no cursing. If you, if you curse, you're automatically kicked out of the group. 
So a lot of the, the, the little different rules, but it looks like they have moderators that help them out because I think that page is up to 75,000 members. So it's, it's pretty, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of people to manage. So that person found like 10 other people that's helping them uh, just look through the, look through the comments and, and approve uh, comments that are with the rules of that page. Cool. Brad, I'm going to unmute you here. What do you got, Brad? Yeah, I was just going to say, um, I think this is where it comes down to uh, a big part of your plan with building a Facebook group, I would think has got to be really trying to get some early adopters, like some, some fans. So, so you have the people policing, um, policing the the environment for you so that way it's not you because i think that the challenge the reason why i think most agents should be should think twice about starting a group with or at least have the full picture is that you i don't think you get to control that and and you're not really meant to control a group and i think the more control you apply to a group the the less value you can actually bring to the users of the group so what you really need to do is try to create a culture yeah. Because um, like in, in Calgary right now, my biggest wariness of I've been wanting to just do a simple Instagram account and a Facebook page on like good news because we've had, you know, four bad years of economy, um, a really like a whole bunch of things kind of going against our city. And even though I think, yeah, it'd be great to have it, you know, just tell the positive stories. My biggest concern was the feedback from people who would say, well, it doesn't matter anyways because, you know, city taxes have gone up 30% this year in a down economy. It's ridiculous. And just those kind of feedback that I thought, okay, so I think what you need to do is if you're going to start the group, you need to get buy-in from a few key people early on to really help. And then as soon as you get that buy-in, you're, you're set. And I think, I, I like that a lot. I agree. And right away, you'll see people that keep posting like, oh, okay, cool. And let me share with one thing that we that Kyle did that I really liked. Um, I'm going to share my screen. This one, this is our everything East County San Diego group. You can see that here. Yeah. Um, one thing he did, a huge thank you to all that invited, um, but also he took a picture of the top contributors, um, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Because um, it really helped. It, it helps them a lot. But I think um, doing the idea of kind of highlighting who you want to to help your community grow, I think what would be really cool is you go to other Facebook groups in your area um, and see who you like, make like start building relationships with them. And then maybe you say, hey, I want to create a Facebook group. I want you to be involved in it. Uh, we're going to have a lunch uh, or a happy hour. And I want like four or five of us involved in like really running it. And it gives them a, a, some sense of ownership. So that way sometimes they can be the jerk and be like, ah, oh, you're wrong when you're like, oh, I don't know what they're doing. So I like that idea. I like bringing it early. Um, um, I'm curious, George, you, you mentioned this and I have my opinion about it and I want to, I want to kind of pull the audience. I want to see what you guys think about, being all posts having to get approved or kind of a uh, wild wild west and then editing it later so i'm not going to vote yet but raise your hands if you like the idea of before a post gets up it has to be approved anyone okay raise your hand what's that i don't have time for that i don't have time to to uh, no. not even talking about the admin side of it i'm talking about you as a, as a person utilizing a group um so if you guys like that, oh, Adam, you can actually raise a hand in here. But no, I, let me just get a physical. If you like that, go ahead and raise your hand. Okay, so Adam likes it. Um, if you like the idea of things being posted and then having to delete um, stuff afterwards, raise your hand. So George and Claudia, you didn't raise your hands. <laughs> Where are you at? I, well, I, like I said, I don't have time to, to babysit the page necessarily on a daily basis, so mm -hmm. I don't want to have to approve them. Um, okay. I, do, I have a closed, uh, I start a, a women's group as well, just for women, for, and um, that's actually grown the fastest. And okay. every time that something gets posted that's not, a lot of people join just to post what they do. Yep. Uh, so I always get, you know, messenger messages, hey, take a look at this, please remove it. Uh, and that's only because I didn't have any moderators. It was just me. 
Um, and uh, so I go in there, delete what they don't like and remind everybody what the rules are and why we're here. Um, so that's worked out pretty well. Uh, just one thing I wanted to comment is I don't allow any other realtors on my community pages. I am the only one. Because I, I don't even litter with other realtor postings. So we're letting other agents join the group, but our group, so I'm talking about our Everything East County group again. Sure. Obviously we let other realtors join the Whistle Way. That would be very sure. silly. Um, but we don't allow any like self promotion. So if an agent posts, if someone comes in, posts an open house, they're fucking gone. Like, I don't care. They don't need to come back in. That being said, say someone posts something and it's just kind of edgy or, you know, ours is about East County and they post something that's happening in La Jolla. Maybe I'll delete it. I'll say, Hey, look, thanks for posting. I appreciate that. But this is for East County. Let's keep it East County. If someone posts something that kind of gets out of hand, one, one of the tools that I really, really like is the, um, the ability to turn on uh, post removal for that member for a certain amount of time. So say someone posts something and I'm like, eh, this is a little, if you don't post like this again, you can turn on post removal for them. So that way within, if they post within the next, I think it's seven or 30 days, you have to approve it first. And if they keep posting stuff that I'm like, no, nope, they're just gone. So I, I think that kind of helps, but Claudia, so from, I think I phrased the question correctly, but you basically like the second option of let them post and moderate after the fact. Correct. Yes. And, and George, you would say, okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, um, so one of the things that I'm going to do, I, I stole this idea from Jesse Peters and Michael Thorne. They do their, um, they, they call it 30 for 30. Do you get anyone know of Michael or Jesse? Cool. We got a couple people. They've got another Facebook group. They do this thing called 30 for 30 where they go around and they tell their favorite 30 places in 30 days. It's a lot of work. We kind of did it with Santee Saturdays once a week. We, you know, we kind of do that style, but um, a little differently. One thing that Michael said is he kind of tweaked it. And I like this a lot for especially community groups. Um, George, Claudia, Adam, um, this applies to you, James, not so much to you, but you can probably find a way to tweak it. Um, but each week, what we're going to do is we're going to vote best of, you know, best, best. I think what I'm going to do is I'll make like a little square post and I'll, we'll say the thing will say in the middle, like best of San Diego or best of East County. And then on the top, I'll say like taco shops. Right. And so, oh, shit, I can't post a picture. In a um, so maybe not. Anyways. The idea is I'm gonna say, okay, who has the best taco shops in Santee or in, in East County? Um, I'll, I'll precede it with a couple of taco shops that I have, but I'll allow uh, members to add um, poll options and allow them to vote for multiple options. Um, and then we'll run it for a week. And, and the idea is we post this, we share it in other groups because I don't want it to be just our group. We only have 600 and I don't know where it is, 600 members, 612 members. That's not enough to say, these are the, these are the best of, but we'll share it in other groups, get a bunch of posts or get a bunch of uh, responses. And then the top three we'll do at the end of the week, we'll end the poll um, and we'll announce the top three winners. And then we'll just do that every week. Taco shops one week, uh, hair salon the next week, uh, auto repair shop. So that way it keeps people engaged, keeps people voting, um, keeps people sharing. I like th that idea a lot. That's what we're going to start um, and so I'll show you kind of how I, um, how I started this idea. Um, and you guys can't join this group. Uh, just like Claudia won't allow other realtors in her group. We don't allow people that are outside of East County in our group. So we'll allow agents, but we don't want people, you know, I don't want someone in New York to join the group because they're not going to engage. They're not going to add value. It's going to hurt our, hurt our edge rate. Um, so we want to create a best of, and I said 30 categories, but we can do, I mean, infinity, right? Um, contestants and winners are chosen by you. Top three of each category win one category voted on per week. And so I said, what categories do you want to see? And so we're getting a lot of comments of like, uh, food, nightlife, parks, and rec, camping, hiking, guilty pleasures, ice cream, donuts, et cetera. So like, I'm going to start doing who has the best donuts in East County. 
I, that's the one I'll probably start off with on Monday. Um, and, I, and I think we'll just get a lot of engagement. I think it'll help share our group. And the cool thing is when you share this in another group, so I, I shared, um, let me find it. I shared this in some groups, right? When you share it in another group. Are those just groups that you own or other groups? Just uh, other groups. I'll, I'll share other in, other groups that are, that are. Relevant. Relevant. Because it's an open group, other people that are in the group can see it. But let me find, this is the cool thing. Oh, fuck. Maybe I missed it. Um, do, are you doing just like a, a best of and then like a list or uh, like a quick video or like highlights from, because I know you do the um, East County Eats. Are you doing like a snippet of that or like how are you doing your, are you doing like multiple ways? I'm going to do a poll. Um, so I'm not going to do photos. I'm not going to do videos because that just takes a lot more work. Um, but I'm just going to do that. And then what, what I'll do is if one of the winners we've done an East County Eats on, I'll share the YouTube video or the Facebook video. So I'll include it that way. Oh, okay. Uh, I like that. This, so this didn't work because I shared it from, this was on our whistle page. But the cool thing is, so I have something posted in my group. I share it to another group. It'll say, Brian shared a post and it'll say, uh, he shared it from East County Eats or everything East County San Diego group. So people can then be like, oh, cool. I want to join that group. I don't know. I don't do it a ton because I'm not trying to spam their group, but when it's, um, I think I did one with Kyle. Not Kyle or, Kyle posted something and I shared it. Let's just see what this looks like. Let's see the shares. Okay. People share it on their private page. Maybe it's here. Sorry guys, this is not fun to watch. So let's see when, when they share it out of here, if they share it into another group, it'll sh still show my group name. No, okay. Anyways. I can't find it, but that's one thing it'll do. So, so if you're posting something and you have a public group, right? It can't be private because then it'll say this content's not available. Uh, post it in the public group and then share it from that group into other public groups. Mm -hmm. And they can see it and it helps bring people back into your group. But make sure it's not, you're not sharing like, join my group. And then you post it in other groups. That's a really good way to get banned. But if you're like, did you hear about this? You post it in your public group rather than posting it on your page, then sharing it into a bunch of different groups. It's a different way to grow. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. cool. I like that. All right. Uh, we've got 10 minutes. Who has a hack that's like, dude, this fucking killed it. Um, and I want to share what's, what's really worked for me on Facebook groups or Hey, I did this for a while and I got banned from six groups. So maybe you shouldn't do that. Cause I've done, I've done, I have both of those uh, scenarios. <laughs> Who's got a good hack? I don't know about a hack, but I would say that some of the most engaging posts for my community have to do with commercial real estate development, anything land clearing or, um, you know, relevant to the entire community gets a lot of interaction. Yeah, that's, that's good. Um, <laughs> my, my community's, at least Santee, which is part of East County, is pretty anti-construction. So whenever I see the construction posts pop up in any of the other groups, they get a lot of engagement, but it's a lot of negative engagement in my community. But you're right, kind of, kind of, what new businesses are coming in or, or leaving get good engagement too. That's a good point. Um, James, what about you? What, what, what's, uh, Oh, he's eating. Sorry. I got you as you got a bite, but I'm curious no, you're good. You're good. in terms of uh, real estate agents, what, what content are you finding gets good 
um, good engagement or um, how do you get agents to join the, the groups, anything like that? Um, we did some incentives stuff uh, for the initial joining. We did like a giveaway for like a hat. Um, but as far as like things that are most engaging or like a lot of them are questions, like asking people for their opinions on stuff because people love to talk about obviously themselves and their opinions. So uh, interesting questions or challenging ones or things that people seem kind of obvious but may not know. Those have worked pretty well. Um, and then the whole uh, friends, family, food, um, felines are like animals, not felines, but, uh, but animals and stuff like that tend to help. So, you know, th those tend to get the most engagement in general. And so if you can craft that around something, um, there's a topic that I was going to post up in our group. So like new agents, they don't know, they don't have a clear path to, to deals, but if you work with a, another agent or like an existing team, you can do, you can kind of grab some of their deals if they're willing to work with you or like on a split for it. So I was going to ask, you know, like if you're a new agent, has anyone thought about going out to some of the teams and asking if they'll do a, they'll let you take a buyer uh, and split it with them 50, 50 or something like that. And so, and get people's opinions on that. So it's just some, some to, you know, get people's mind moving and, and uh, engaging and obviously opinions. Yeah. I like that. And then food. I always post food and books. Oh, people, what people are listening to, like podcasts, and then um, what they're reading is mm -hmm. it normally gets a couple hundred um, responses at least. Awesome. James, what's your Facebook group? There's uh, Real Estate on the Rocks. Um, do we do the – I think the other ones are private. We haven't really built them out yet. Okay. Yeah. Like the Wilco um, Eats, I think that's a page, but not a group. Um, there's a Top Shelf Agents one, but I don't think that one's public. That was I think one I'm of in our top initial like, Top Shelf Agents? Okay. I think Real Estate on the, yeah. Top oh, Shelf. Top shelf page? Okay. Um, but Real Estate on the Rocks, I can't find as a group. I see the page. Oh, maybe I, maybe I said it in reverse. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Cool. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, just trying to make it fun and enjoyable for people to, to get on there and learn and not have the uh, some of the douchey comments that you get in some of the other groups. Yeah. Really get annoying. Okay, so this is a this is a good kind of a question for you guys. What's your what's the ideal size for a group that that you own and manage, right? Because I think um, is anyone unfamiliar with lab code agents? The Facebook group. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you guys know it? Yes. Brad, you know of it or you don't? Adam doesn't know it? Okay. Um, it's one of, it's, I would, I would guess the biggest um, real estate agent Facebook uh, group. It has 96,000 members. <laughs> In my opinion, that's not something that I want to run and manage. Um, uh, I mean, they have, they have like 40 moderators because you have to, um, what's kind of your ideal size of, of a group? I mean, we all want to grow it, but I don't want to grow it that big. I don't think, uh, I mean, I might change my mind, but, um, let's just kind of go around the room. Brad, what do you think? Uh, I pretty much, as long as I'm getting engagement, um, on, on posts, I just don't want it to be going off into the into nothing. So I don't know what it would take. I think it's more important to have invested people than group membership, just numbers. So if you had like 200 true fans and people really interested in that topic, I think you could grow organically more like better. I'd rather have two to 500 people that were like all in on that group, dug it, got value from it, added value to it than 5,000 people that weren't that invested engaging or posting. True. But I mean, there's going to be a, a natural fall off of, I mean, you're not going to have 200 members and all of them be engaged. Understood. Right? Yeah. It's always going to be like a 5% or 2% yeah. or something. Sure. So, okay. So Brad, how many members, because like lab coats gets engagement. Um, I mean, this one has 
353 comments, skip, 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 107 comments, 95 comments, 97 comments. For, so, I mean, they get engagement, but that's, a, it's just a lot. I mean, it's, it's a lot, um, <laughs> but I want to grow, I want to grow the whistle way bigger. I just don't know at what point is, is too much, you know? So, um, anyone have any last parting terms, words, advice, um, words of, of things to avoid? I was just going to say, I guess it really depends more on your, uh, your goals. Like, uh, lab code agents is more of like a community. They'll pump the events and I mean, you still got a good amount of, uh, pretty douchey people in there making Snyder remarks. Um, so that can be police better, but I mean, like, especially if your your group, it depends on your end goal. If you're going to be pushing it more towards just real estate, then it obviously could be smaller. If you're going to do, keep doing what you're doing and grow the whole um, communication, um, the shows, content like this, your group can get pretty big without it getting <laughs> too crazy with a bunch of like mini events and stuff like that. We're trying to do a combination of like a couple different things. That's why we segmented the groups a bit. Yeah. Um, some community facing stuff for like food and, and, and restaurants and stuff like that. Um, the business like small business Saturdays and other things like that for real estate facing and consumers. And then the, the agent facing stuff, which can grow a lot bigger. So it just depends on really your end goal and the community you really want to develop. My, I think. Yeah, I agree. You definitely keep this up going. Yeah, I like this a lot. I started it and people were like, this is great. And then I stopped it right after I got really good feedback, which was stupid. That's great. Um, so I'm like, fuck it, we're back into it. So um, again, the goal of these kind of calls is uh, every Friday, I'm going to try and kind of move it around in terms of time, move it around with different people. Um, so I'm going to post earlier on in the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, say, hey, this is the topic. Um, obviously, you guys know how to get invited. You commented first and you answered the question. Um, so I like this kind of format and I think this is a really good way to engage group members on a more one-on-one -on -one, uh, way. Um, and a little FOMO too, a little fear of missing out. Yeah, well you almost did miss out, but yeah, there missed out. We, saw, we saw Brad shirtless and then run like a little girl. Yeah. <laughs> so, that is going to be included in the YouTube video. I think it's hilarious. I think you got to do it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to cut it. I'm just going to cut the first part out and cut the end out. And, and that's <laughs> um, cool, guys. Well, this is good. I'm going to end it here. Uh, if you guys have any questions, anything like that, obviously the group is always open. Um, if you guys have any people that you think would uh, get value from the Whistleway group, feel free to invite them in. We're we're always looking for for good con contributors. Uh, James, you, you obviously know of those douchey people in the different groups. Do not invite them, please, or <laughs> you, will, you will be exited quickly as well. Um, so cool, guys. Thanks for being awesome. Oh. Thanks for, for sharing your information. Um, Thanks, I'll Brian. do my best. That's the cool. best, man. <laughs> All right. See you guys later. Bye. Bye.